Hello and welcome to a very interesting video. In this video I will show you how you can build a simple circuit uh, which protects rechargeable batteries because um, if you are using rechargeable batteries like this for your project then you have to keep in mind that if you discharge them below a certain voltage you could damage them. So you have to do something to prevent this, okay? And I have a project for which I need batteries and I needed this circuit so I will share it with you but before I do that I will tell you what I'm currently working on. It's this here and this uh, will be a portable tube amplifier. It, it already is a portable tube amplifier so I finished the first layout. Um, I always do uh, two layouts for more complex projects. So the first layout is the prototype and the second layout is hopefully then the final layout. And if you are interested in how this thing sounds, I already made a video or a series of video in which I uh, show uh, how you can compute the values of the amplifier part of this, how you can compute the values of a simple uh, tube amplifier with the ECL86 or something similar. And the first video in this ser series um, shows you a recording of the loudspeaker so I've directly recorded the output of this tube amplifier or the I've connected the, the output of the tube amplifier to the loudspeaker and I've recorded the output of the loudspeaker directly with a microphone uh, and you can listen to it just check out the first part of my uh, ECL tube amplifier uh, design series actually it's this this trailer part so I've called it part zero because it's just just the sound check and this circuit, uh, actually the interesting thing or maybe challenging thing, I don't know, uh, is that uh, it, op it should operate on batteries. So you have a very low voltage at the input and the tube needs a high voltage to operate 200, 300 volts or so. And to generate this voltage I use a step up converter here. So this is for the high voltage. Uh, this is another, this is a step down converter which actually generates the filament voltage, the three point or the 6.3 volts for the filaments and here I have a controller which is um, or a chip which controls uh, the batteries which is for charging the batteries uh, so this chip charges the batteries with the help of this transistor and you can also connect an external supply right here and then the batteries will be charged and you can here listen to music you can disconnect the battery uh, the supply and then uh, the device will use the batteries yeah, but one thing which is missing is the protection circuit because I haven't implemented a battery protection in uh, my first layout. It will be implemented in the second one. And here build the, the battery protection circuit on a breadboard, okay? And uh, currently it, it uses this load resistor. I've already tried it with the circuit and it works perfectly fine with the circuit. But for a demonstration I will use this resistor. Uh, because it's a bit easier now to handle and there's also this LED here um, which shows you if there is voltage on the secondary but before I will show you the circuit in action I will actually show you the circuit diagram and explain a little bit so let me get my whiteboard okay here we have the battery here we have the load resistor um, this battery consists of multiple cells because I in, in my project I use eight cells if you are using a different amount of cells it will also work fine, no worries. Um, and here this thing is a potentiometer or a trimmer uh, which you use to adjust the threshold voltage. So this needs to be adjusted depending on how many cells are in use. Okay, so let me start uh, with the actual explanation. Uh, so first of all let's assume that this battery is fully charged and this trimmer is adjusted to the right level, to the right threshold, so that it is on if the battery is fully charged, but that it turns off uh, if it goes below the threshold, below the lower uh, threshold. Okay, so uh, if the battery is connected to the circuit, the fully charged battery, then we have a voltage on this rail right here. And at the beginning this capacitor here is empty, so an empty capacitor acts like a short circuit so this means that we have a short circuit here at the beginning and since we have a short circuit here at the beginning current can flow through this 
transistor. So this transistor right here. So we have a base current in this transistor because of the shorted capacitor, at least for a short amount of time. Let's see what happens um, later. But current can flow through this path. Okay. Uh, this means that this transistor conducts and if this transistor conducts we will have a voltage on this rail right here. Okay. Um, if we have a voltage on this rail here, then with this voltage divider, this transistor gets a voltage on its base as well. And if this voltage is higher than two diode drops, uh, so this diode plus the diode in the transistor, if the voltage is higher than that, then this transistor also turns on. And the voltage is higher because the battery is fully charged and uh, we have adjusted uh, this uh, voltage divider in a way so that the circuit uh, works well. And if this transistor turns on, then current can flow through this transistor, through this resistor and here to ground. So this transistor is then holding this transistor here in the on position because current can flow through here. And even if the capacitor now is fully charged and if the capacitor is fully charged, it becomes like an infinite resistance. So it's like, like you remove it from the circuit. Current cannot, flow, uh, cannot longer flow down here but now it can flow this way and therefore the, this transistor will stay on. Okay, so this transistor stay, uh, will stay on, so the voltage will be still here, will be present still uh, on this place. And now this transistor is also powered, so this transistor will turn on. If this transistor turns on, then it will pull the gate of this P-channel MOSFET down to ground. And if this happens, then this MOSFET will turn on and current can flow through the circuit. Okay, so now let's say the battery discharges. So the voltage on this point gets lower and lower. What happens now? If this happens, then the voltage on this point also gets lower because this is conducting here. So it's this voltage is almost or this voltage is almost the same as this. Uh, and this gets lower and lower and lower until it reaches a specific voltage where the, uh, the voltage here on this voltage divider output is lower than two diode drops. Okay, And if it is lower than two diode drops, this transistor will turn off, of course. And uh, this transistor, if this transistor is off and this capacitor is fully charged, then uh, no, then there is no current available for this transistor, which can flow down here through the base. And so this, no, this path is disconnected. This path is disconnected. So this transistor will also have to turn off, okay? And if this transistor is off, then this voltage here will be off or will be zero. So if this voltage here is zero, uh, what's happening next is that this transistor will turn off. And if this transistor is off, it releases the gate of this transistor, so to speak, and will pull it to the battery voltage. And if the gate and the source of this transistor is, the, is on the same potential, then it will turn off because it's a P-channel uh, MOSFET. It will turn off. And if this is off, then the load gets disconnected. And this is how the, your batteries are protected. You will have a little bit of leakage in the circuit, of course, so that even if it's off, there will be a small amount uh, of leakage current in it, but uh, it should be small enough so that your battery is protected um, against uh, being damaged by uh, your load, okay? So this is actually how the circuit works. Pretty simple, huh? Okay. Um, one note to the selection of this transistor, of this MOSFET here, is actually it should have a low RDS on. RDS on is the resistance of the MOSFET which it has when it is on. Uh, basically then it acts like a resistor with a low resistance. The lower it is, the lower are the losses on this MOSFET. So it depends on how high the current is here. And if you have a high current, you need a low RDS on so that you have, that you have that your losses here are quite low. Uh, then it's also important that the threshold voltage on this transistor, on this MOSFET is below the voltage which uh, is uh, present here. So that if this transistor conducts, okay, then it will pull this point almost to zero, almost to ground. Let's say it will pull it to 0 0.2 volts or so. Uh, then this voltage, let's say it is um, eight volts or so. If this voltage is eight volts and this is 0 0.2, then the voltage difference will be 7.8. And uh, you have to make sure that the threshold voltage of this 
thing here is smaller than the smallest possible voltage which can occur across here, okay? Because otherwise uh, it could happen that the uh, transistor is not fully conducting and this is not a good thing because then you have a lot of power dissipation and you don't get the uh, same voltage on the input and output. If you look up the data sheet of, of uh, MOSFETs, we will also find that um, they have a gate charge and, and such things which uh, limits the switching frequency or creates switching losses actually because it takes some time to ramp up uh, and these parameters are not uh, important for this circuit because it is not a switching operation, it's more or less a steady operation, it, it just turns on the MOSFET and it, if it is on it stays on and that's it and there's no high speed switching like in a switch mode converter so this properties aren't important, it's just the RDS on of the MOSFET which is important and uh, the threshold voltage of the of the MOSFET which is important but not the not not something which has to do with high speed switching. And of course the MOSFET uh, must be able to handle the current. So of course the load current it, it must be able to handle it. If it isn't able to handle the load current then you have a problem for sure. Okay. So that's for this explanation and uh, now let me show the circuit in action. So now let me show the circuit in action. Um, here is load, I have this power resistor here and I've also connected this LED uh, with a series resistor on the output uh, so that you can see if the output is on or off. And here I use this uh, multimeter to monitor the input voltage which is currently zero, almost zero. And here I have the, my lab power supply which is now off, it says 10.13 volts but it is now off and now let me turn it on and, and uh, to, to, so that you can see what it does, okay? And there we go. Now we have 10.10 volts at the input and the LED is on. I don't know where I've set the threshold now exactly, here, here this potentiometer is for setting the threshold. And uh, now just let me let me decrease the voltage and see what's happen what happens. Um, here, okay. So now we are decreasing the voltage and watch the LED. This is important. Watch the LED and the input voltage on the multimeter. So keep keep an eye on that. Okay. And now it has turned off, as it should. So after a specific voltage, it has turned off the output. This is, this is what it should do. So this is working perfectly fine. But what happens now if I increase the voltage again without interrupting the input? So now let me increase it again, um, here. And as you can see, it won't turn on again. And this is what it actually should do. Because if you connect, uh, uh, if you if it disconnects the battery, and the battery, there was a heavy load on the battery, if it disconnects it, then it could happen that after disconnecting the battery, the voltage can jump up again. Uh, and we don't want it to turn uh, on uh, again if the voltage jumps up, because then it in worst case it can just start oscillating or something. So we want it to stay off, uh, okay? But how can we turn it on again? Of course, by disconnecting the battery uh, and reconnecting it. So I, I turn off the power supply so that this goes to completely zero volts. So now it's at completely zero. And if I, or almost, or I, and if I turn it on again, there we go, now we have 10.7 volts and the LED is on again. So, amazing, works perfectly fine. So let me decrease the voltage again because it was so much fun. And it is off, okay. Um, and finally now, now let me show you how you can actually set uh, the voltage of the thing. Basically it's quite easy. Um, so I would use a power supply instead of the battery for for setting the voltage because you can adjust it quite pre precisely and then afterwards you uh, replace the power supply with the battery of course. So I want to set it uh, to 8 volts or a bit higher than 8 volts, let's say 8.2 volts because 
uh, I use this uh, NEMH cells with uh, its minimum battery, which is minimum voltage is one volts. I use eight cells, so this would be eight volts, but I want to have it a bit higher. Um, so let me decrease, first of all, let me decrease the voltage to the threshold with my power supply. Okay, there we have it. And now I have to turn, uh, make sure that the thing is on. So what I will do now is I adjust the potentiometer in a way so that the thing is um, on on on, a, on uh, the one end where it is always on. So and now of course I have to interrupt the power and connect it again to make sure that it is on. So now the potentiometer is actually at the uppermost position, okay, up here. So this ensures that the thing is on, okay. So now uh, I will readjust the power supply because the voltage has dropped a little bit because now the load is connected. Okay. 8.2, 8.2 volts, it's, it's good enough. And now to adjust the potentiometer, I will now turn it until the uh, LED turns off. So I will turn it slowly. Just keep it, keep in mind that you turn it slowly, because you never know when the cut off will happen. Okay, now it's off. So now we have adjusted it to about point uh, eight point two volts cutoff voltage. The voltage has now increased a bit because it has uh, interrupted the thing. So what I will do now is I will increase the voltage a bit on the power supply, turn it off, and turn it on again. So now it's on again, and now I will again decrease the thing, and now it's off. Okay. So now we have set the threshold voltage about to about 8.2 volts. It's not extremely precise, so I would set the voltage a bit higher to make sure that it is surely turning off the thing. Uh, yeah, but that's it. And I want to show you something extra, uh, which happens if you connect, uh, or what happens if you connect a capacitive load uh, to that thing, because there's something you have to consider something important, okay? so. I will turn off the power supply and here I have a huge capacitor, okay, I have a huge capacitive load, 68,000 microfarads, so it's a huge capacitance and I've already connect the minus to the circuit and I will also connect the plus of the capacitor to the circuit. So what we have here, so now I have connected the capacitor and what we have here now is a resistor in parallel with the capacitor and this is actually for simulating something like this because this circuit has a lot of capacitance in it maybe not as much as this but it has a lot of capacitance in it and secondly uh, this is a tube circuit so uh, if it is cold at the beginning then uh, the filaments will draw a high current and this will also decrease. So the filaments and the capacitors are acting actually as like a short circuit at the beginning. And what will happen now? Uh, now if I turn on the supply and even if it is uh, above the threshold, let's see what happens. Have you seen it? it the LED flashed for a short amount of time, but then it, it, it went off again immediately and the voltage, the voltage is still above the threshold. So what's happening here is actually since the load is so big at the beginning, the short circuit is so so short at the beginning, the resistance which the circuit sees at the beginning is so low that uh, there is actually a voltage drop on the input and this means there is actually less than uh, the, the, the threshold, in, in this case 8.2 volts or so. And this means that it won't turn on. It, it will never turn on. But we have to do something to make it turn on. So let, let me show you again. Turn off the power supply. And now for a very short amount of time it is on. But then it goes off. So the thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that it stays on for a longer time. And it has to stay on for such a time that uh, the capacitor is charged enough 
so that the resistance of the capacitor is high enough that the voltage won't uh, break and therefore uh, the thing will uh, st uh, will stay on. And now let me let us think what we can do about that. Mm, let me get the the board again. And actually, what we can do about it is quite simple. If you have followed the explanation at the beginning, uh, this capacitor shorts out this path at the beginning, but just for a short amount of time. And if we want to have this short for a longer amount of time, then uh, what we actually can do is we can increase the values of this resistor because it forms a time constant with the capacitor, or we can just increase the value of the capacitor because then it takes longer for it to fully charge uh, until uh, it will get uh, its high impedance state and until it will uh, dis it will be disconnected, so to speak. Okay. So the only thing that we have to do is we have to increase the capacitance value. We could compute the value, but we can also just try it with an ex experiment, which is in this case maybe the better options, uh, option. So let's do that. Um, I don't want to adjust it now precisely. So this, the thing which I will do, I will just plug in this very big capacitor. It is actually 820 microfarads. So you don't need such a high value, but I will just for demonstration, I will plug it in. So first of all, let me turn off the power supply. So, okay, it's off now. And now I will plug in. So this is the 100 nano nanofarad capacitor, which uh, was connected all the time. And I will just plug it into parallel, which effectively, uh, effectively makes it a high capacitance. Again, you, you won't need such a high capacitance or you can just fiddle around with the resistors to make this thing work actually might be a better option than than putting than than putting into uh, than putting a such such a high value into it. But yeah, just let let me show. So now the thing is off, and now let me turn on the thing. Okay, and now it works because now it stays on fixed. The first transistor stays on for a long for long enough that this capacitor can charge, and therefore it will stay on. So we have fixed it. That's, that's uh, how you do it. And what this also now does is there's a little bit of a delay in turning off, but this is not a problem because it doesn't matter if you disconnect the battery immediately or five seconds later, it, it, uh, you, it won't hurt the batteries if you connect it immediately or five seconds later. It, it will hurt the batteries if, it's, if, there's, if they are on a couple of minutes or, or hours after discharging, but it won't hurt them if they are just just five seconds or so. Okay, so just to show you that, what's, what's happening now if we go below the threshold, so I will go below it very quickly. So now we are below and the thing stays still on, but not for long because now uh, this capacitor here charges up and if it is charged up, then the circuit will work how it should. And since this is actually so big, this will take a while. So again, you have to use not such a big capacitor, okay? Um, so let's still wait a bit because again, we've set the threshold to 8.2 something. So we are below that and now it should be off. Well, almost and now, there we go. Now it's off. Uh, it's still a bit glowing because now the LED is supplied via this capacitor here. Now it's completely off. The, the no worries, the, 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 the transient, the off, the, the, the signal when it turns off is still extremely hard. But what you have saw, what you saw on the LED was a slow discharge curve because of this capacitor. Okay. But no worries. It will turn off extremely hard as before. So now it's off. Um, and let me increase the voltage again, just to show it you again. And now I can turn it on again. There we go. So now it's on again. And let me turn it off. Oh, sorry, not this thing. <laughs> and now it's on again. Yeah. And now let me decrease the voltage again. So now we are below the threshold voltage. And after some seconds, it will turn off the thing. So yeah, let me just put in a, a capacitor with a lower value to make 
this happen faster. So now I have a 47 microfarad capacitor in here, which I think is still uh, too big, but just to show you, um, I will turn it on uh, right now. So now the power supply is off, which you can see here. And uh, let me turn it on. And okay, so this is still working fine. So the LED stays still on, so we don't need such a high capacitance like the thing before and we can go even lower but this is up to you to experiment with it what's the right value values for your circuit okay so let me show you that it still works with the lower capacitance and now it should be off but yeah again this capacitor here supplies the LED so it will stay on a bit longer okay so this uh, here concludes now our video about uh, the circuit and I hope you find we have found it useful and you can do something useful with it and yeah as always thanks for watching and bye see you in the next video